A while ago, I took apart a microwave oven, and in the oven was this mysterious circuit board. wasn't quite sure its full function. I could see there was some filtering circuitry, but there was also a relay and banks of power resistors. And I put it aside because I thought it'd be quite fun to reverse engineer later on. And I have now reverse engineered it, but to demonstrate it operating, I've had to also modify. I've had to lift these resistors out of the circuit board and increase the value of a capacitor times 10 just to slow it down because this is an inrush limiter and it's very interesting simple circuitry. So I'm about to power it up. You'll hear the click of the switch going on and you can time how long it takes the light to light. It didn't take long, but before, it was like literally the relay came in almost instantly because it was only a matter of uh, milliseconds. It was only a couple of cycles. But now there's a notable delay when it's turned on and a delay when it's turned off. You can hear the relay de-energized too. I'll do that quietly so you can hear it. Do you hear it? Anyway, let's explore the circuitry. I shall disconnect the wires and put it out the way. It's quite ingenious. It's certainly a circuit that's worth knowing. So I'll bring in some pictures now, since I've had an opportunity to take some photos and we'll explore the circuitry in greater detail. So this is a single-sided circuit board and it's got two distinct sections. It's got the RF noise filtering section and the fuse, an 8 amp fuse, and then it's got the time delay relay and all these components are associated with that. And it is very simple. It's literally, you can see the capacitor here. That's the original one, 47 microfarad, a diode, a zener to clamp the voltage, the relay. And then it's got a couple of pairs of resistors for uh, limiting the time it takes for the uh, capacitor to charge up and the relay to come in. And then it's got a couple of low uh, resistance resistors in parallel just to limit current out to, in this case, the microwave oven transformer. So I can show you the other side of this circuit board, just in case you want to have a wee reverse engineer yourself. And there's the very distinct divide uh, that divides the two sections. It's literally two circuit boards on the one PCB. So now I shall show you the schematics. I've divided it into two pages because effectively it's two completely different circuits. The first one is a very standard filtering circuit, but a fairly good quality one. It has the 8 amp ceramic fuse. The ceramic is important here. You can't really use a glass fuse and the voltages above, say, about 32 volts because uh, the 120 or 240 volts, in the event of a fault, uh, it can cause flashover inside. So the ceramic fuses are rated for much higher current. We've got the 330 nanofarad Class X2 capacitor. The Class X2 are designed for going across the mains. In that case, it's this uh, big yellow capacitor here. And they are designed for connecting directly across the mains. The class themselves is self-healing. What that means is that if the separator inside punctures, it will kind of blow itself clear. I'm not sure I'd call that self-healing, but uh, they kind of, they, they fail in a controlled manner. Then we've got the com mode suppression choke. That's this toroid choke here. And it's got two windings on a common circular core. And what that does is that to the current coming in and then the current going out, it doesn't really pose much of a limit to that. But common mode uh, noise that's coming along both these connections at once, noise that's been generated by the circuitry in the microwave oven, will actually oppose each other because the direction they're going and it stops it going out onto the mains wiring getting radiated as RF interference. Then there's a very generous uh, discharge resistor, 510k, but it looks like a one watt resistor or at the very least half watt, but that is quite highly rated. And that's been used for its voltage rating because it is a good quality unit. And then equally good quality, you've got your 2.2 nanofarad class Y capacitors. These are the ones that are designed to fail in a safe manner. And these are proper sized ones, not like the tiny ones you get in USB power supplies that are not class Y. They're just basically blue ordinary capacitors and can fail in a dangerous manner. Uh, but this one is good because it is sold in the UK. It's an official product. Can't remember the brand of it, but it seems quite well designed. And this bit's well designed too. So the terminology on the circuit board, on the other part, it was just live in, live out, neutral in, neutral out. This one's got P out, SW out, and then T in. Now, the closest I can really approximate that is this is neutral, this is live, and this is the uh, output to the transformer. It would work with both these swapped, but in a slightly different way. However, 
This is the way I hooked it up there to demonstrate it. So what happens is that initially when you power it up, uh, the live goes out to the transformer via these two resistors because this relay contact is initially open. And those two resistors are rated 5 watts each and uh, 47 ohms each, but they're in parallel, so the total resistance is about 23.5 ohms. And that means that on a typical UK supply, it's going to limit the initial inrush current to about 10 amps. This has many advantages. It means that you're unlikely to trip a circuit breaker if it's on the edge, if there's other loads as well, and that just little spike of the transformer powering trips it. But it also makes it much easier. It gives the transformer a softer life, um, and also more importantly, the capacitor on the output of the transformer of a microwave oven is initially fully discharged if its discharge resistor is working. And there's a diode pumps that from the uh, transformer secondary up to quite high voltage. And initially, because that capacitor is fully discharged, it, you'll see a massive current spike, which not only potentially damages the capacitor, but potentially damages the diode as well. So this circuit basically puts these resistors in series to limit their initial current just to, to get it started. And then this relay comes in and it bypasses those resistors to actually give it the full current without these resistors limiting that any further and getting very hot in the process. So to time that, give that time delay, there's two 3.3K resistors and they are quite high power resistors because they are passing enough current to power this relay and uh, although they remain powered while the unit's running, the power dissipation I worked out is roughly about just under half a watt. And they are half a watt, five, four watts. And they are rated five watts each. So they're kind of generously rated for that. Also, when you power up, the current flows through those. It's limited, goes via this diode, and it starts charging this capacitor. It can't power the relay straight away because that capacitor introduces a slight charge ramp before it reaches the voltage of the uh, relay coil that where it can actually give him enough magnetic force to pull in and as soon as it starts pulling in as soon as the armature of the relay gets close to the uh, coil it has a sort of inverse square law effect it suddenly snaps in it doesn't take as much force to hold it in as it does to actually initially draw it so it does still close decisively this inner diode is presumably there just to cap the voltage across that to protect the relay from over voltage the bits I changed were I changed the I made those resistors open circuit just purely so you could see the relay closing to show it powering up. And also I changed this from 47 microfarad to 470 microfarad just to get that longer delay because it really was just literally a few main cycles before this relay activated. And it just looked like the light was coming on almost as soon as you clicked the switch. It didn't really come across that well in video. So other places this circuit is used, and this is a very simple implementation of it. It's very nice, actually. It's used in things like uh, audio amplifiers to avoid that speaker thump um, partly by giving a softer it well it does that thing again if you've got lots of amplifiers in a rack powered from a circuit breaker it can actually trip the circuit breaker when they initially power up but it also does create that slightly softer start that it reduces the risk of speaker thump um, and it's also used in the little compact electronic inverter welders they will typically have um some NDC thermistors, in the same way you've got resistors here, they all have the NDC ones, the inrush limiters, but a large bank of them in parallel so that they take off that initial spike but don't dissipate too much power in the process. But then they've got the relay across them and a really interesting implementation of this I saw was that the relay was powered directly from the 12 volt power supply and the 12 volt power supply in the welders is used for powering the control circuitry. And when you power it on, it's got that little bootstrap thing that it has to charge a capacitor before it can actually kick the power supply on and uh, that was used as a time delay for the relay so the relay although it was just directly across the 12 volt supply still didn't power up initially there'd been that slight delay while the inrush resistor did their work and then the relay would be energized when the 12 volts came on very clever but that's quite a neat little circuit it's a very simple circuit that could be adapted to other applications as well and uh, it's very much cost optimized but cleverly done and very well done